This video is going to be a little bit different, not quite a review, really more of an essay on a, a certain topic within the industry, in this case, DLC. Now, I don't think DLC is a bad word or, or a bad acronym or whatever. I've seen people deride it as like this scourge that's ruining the gaming industry and message boards and comment sections and stuff. And I think maybe that's a vocal minority that, that most of us understand that DLC is not necessarily bad and that sometimes it can be good for both the people making the game and the consumers. And just to be clear and thorough, I'd like to give an example of that before I go too far into this discussion. It's going to be a little redundant for a lot of players, for a lot of people, especially if you've been playing video games a lot for the past five years. But I really want to make sure that we're on a solid, stable ground before I go too deep into this topic. So, so for the sake of example, let's say that instead of doing whatever it is that I did with my life, I buckled down and I learned the requisite skills to release a game to the public. We'll call it a Shoot War, okay? Then in a couple of months, I developed some new maps for Shoot War. Now, we can all agree I should be able to release those without having to make an entire new game, right? Without having to make Shoot War 2, just for these three or four maps, I can release them as DLC. And I think we can all agree I should be able to ask for money for them. I mean, what am I, working for free? You know? Now the same goes for a single-player adventure game. Let's say I release a game called Swordman. It's a good game, but later I decide to add to the story, to the plot, to the game world, but without having to make an entire new sequel to Swordman. So I want to release some new content, some new levels. You know, we'll call it Swordman, Ashes of the Swordman. This type of DLC has been around for a long time. We just didn't call it DLC because you didn't download it. It was called an expansion pack and you used to have to physically go get it. And we can all agree that it's fair for those to make money too, right? I mean, they cost money to produce, generally speaking. Now, unfortunately, just like anything else, whenever there's enough money involved, you start to get people from outside of the industry, investors and the like, people who, who come in and are very removed from the creative process. Now, this can be a good thing because sometimes they help the creative type stick to a good schedule and also, they, they invest capital that wouldn't have been there otherwise. But where it can be bad is that these people tend to try and squeeze every dime they can out of these things. This is most egregious and infamously unethical with day one DLC releases. That is to say, DLC that's released on the release date of the full game. A few years ago, day one DLC became this big thing in the news because Mass Effect 3 and Bioshock 2 had released with significant content available for download for an extra cost on the release date of the full game. The obvious question everyone asks is, well, if it's ready on day one, why not just put it in the game? Now, it really seems like a shameless cash grab, like something that would have been in the game is now been taken out and set aside for an extra cost. However, whether or not that's true is actually a point of contention, and I've heard some points about why day one DLC might not necessarily be bad. I highly recommend the video on the Extra Credits channel that goes over this. And I'll leave a link to that in the description. This video makes some interesting points that were clearly, carefully, and intelligently constructed, but to be frank, I don't think they hold up. I realize I'm responding to a six-year-old video, but better late than never, and uh, also, I would say most of the claims in that video supposedly still stand today. So the first point in those videos I like to contest has to do with Microsoft and Sony certification. Games had to be submitted to Microsoft and Sony before they can be released on Xbox and PlayStation, respectfully. Those games have to pass certification for those platforms before they can be released on them. Those companies have to give those games their stamp of approval and say, yes, it's okay for you to put this out. Now, according to this extra credits video, because of this, there's an extra six to eight weeks between when the work is done on the game and when it's actually released. Now, in the past, according to this video. In that six to eight weeks, not a lot would get done. People would take vacations, that kind of stuff. And so day one DLC gives them something to do in those six to eight weeks. This is an interesting point at first, but I, I know it really doesn't work like that at all. Say I actually used to work in this specific field, and I can tell you that anything that's gonna come out for a game, whether it be a map, a gun, some extra levels, the entire game itself or a patch, anything needs to be submitted to those companies before it can come out on those platforms. Everything. And it all needs to be submitted with a lot of time to spare because here's the big kahuna. Sometimes those companies reject things and a big company with inflexible release dates and a lot of money on the line 
has to have a lot of time spare in case a company says no. So I reject this notion that that six to eight weeks is, is this free period where they can just work on DLC that's going to come out on day one. Maybe small things. I don't know, maybe a camel. <sighs> Additionally, it's not very likely there's going to be a lot of downtime in that interim period after you submit a game. For these big budget AAA games, those six to eight weeks are typically spent working on the huge multi-gigabyte patches that come out for all these games in the first week, the first month, etc. The second main point this video makes arguing in favor of day one DLC is that since sales data shows that the later you put DLC out, the less likely people are to buy it, companies are incentivized to put out DLC earlier. Therefore, it stands to reason that some DLC might have been created or invested in for that day one release that otherwise might not have been put out at all. This creates more net content for the game, which is good for everyone, right? Right, so this does make sense as an argument at first, but it doesn't really stand up to scrutiny in my opinion. So yes, DLC does sell better when it's sold closer to the release date of the full game. Obviously, less people give a shit the longer you wait after the game comes out. Less people are paying attention and care about a game. So yes, the sooner you put DLC out, the better it sells. Of course. And yes, this does incentivize developers to manufacture DLC for that day one that they otherwise might not have, you know, put any time or money into at all. But I don't think this is a very good reputation of the idea that more often than not, it's a shallow cash grab still. Imagine a scenario with me. So a marketing executive comes down to the designers and programmers of a game and says, hey, uh, think up some DLC now. We've done the research and it sells better if you come out with it on day one. I need you to come up with some DLC we can release on day one. Let's be generous and say I need it by two weeks after we're done with the regular game. You know, we need time to submit it to Microsoft and Sony. And we need a lot of time to spare because they might reject us. Well, what? Are the designers and programmers going to start working in a hyperbolic time chamber to produce Dawn Guard tier content in that two weeks? No, of course not. What's much more realistic to expect is filler content, like a camel, or a neatly shaped sword that makes the game easier. And what's also an interesting point about these day one DLC weapons and gear specifically in single player games is that playtesters who give feedback about difficulty to the programmers usually have access to those items, right? I mean, that's common sense, right? This raises the unfortunate possibility of playtesters giving feedback to developers using weapons and gear that people will have to pay for in the real world. Sometimes this leads to the earlier levels of games seemingly balanced for players who bought extra shit. FUCK! At best, what we get isn't a camel or a special sword. At best, what we really get is, is good, really well thought out content with a lot of time spent on it that took work and time and polish away from the main game. These resources are, are, are finite. So at worst, what we get is content that was conceived as and planned to be part of the main game, but then was set aside with a price tag because, well, no matter how egregious it is, no matter how many Reddit threads get to the front page about it, and no matter how many infinite manlets like me scream at a webcam about it in a video, enough of us still buy the shit for them to keep doing it. So just consider not doing that. Does that make sense? Maybe I'm being too cynical or leaving some important aspect or concept of this out. And if you feel like I am, let me know. Comments are always open. Anyway, thanks for watching.